Okay, so Si Man Dan is, a, I guess, a semi-popular science vlogger, and he likes to make videos debunking conspiracy theorists. And that's something I like about him, because I also used to make lots of videos debunking conspiracy theorists. These days, I don't spend too much time doing that, because I realize that if people want to believe certain things, they're going to believe it. Humans aren't as logical as we like to imagine. What difference does it really make? However, all of that being said, it just came to my attention that Si Man Dan made a video about me a couple of months ago. Now, he has made videos about me in the past, and so this is nothing new. And I do appreciate the free publicity that Si Man Dan gives me. So thank you very much for that, Dan. Although in saying that, Dan, if you see this, mate, come on. You could have put a link to my video in the info box. If you're going to use my video as a basis for one of your videos, the polite thing to do is to put a link to it. But that's by the by. He said a few things in his response to me that are factually incorrect according to the official story, which might come as a surprise to people who believe that these science vloggers are intelligent. But to those of you who understand what science, modern science really is, it might not be such a surprise. But there's a couple of things I want to address. And my hope is that when you see the evidence I'm about to present you, if you are interested in this topic, you will go and do your own research, which is what I try and encourage people to do. It's what I've always encouraged people to do. And it's what I've been trying to do. I'm trying to find out, okay, what is the official story? What is the evidence? Are there any competing claims or are there competing frameworks or... Are there other things I should consider? Let me come to my own conclusions. In Dan's video, which like I said, I only found out about this recently, like earlier today, and it's a two month old video. In his video, he doesn't seem to encourage his audience to do that. He doesn't present any scientific evidence or any papers that people go and read. He, that doesn't seem to be his shtick, but I'm not here to criticize Dan. What I'm gonna do is just to explain a couple of things. So let's take a look at what he has to say, and then I will show you the evidence that contradicts him. Before I do, let me tell you guys that if you're on the JLB mailing list, you want to go and check your inbox or your spam folder or your promotions folder right now, depending on what email platform you use. I sent out possibly the best JLB mailing list email this year so far. Two member podcasts, normally just for members, now waiting for you in your inbox. So check your inbox, check your spam folder, check your promotions folder. Check wherever the emails might be going because there's two hours of content waiting for you right now for free if you're on that free JLB mailing list. Now, enough about that. Let's go and take a look at this. Like I said, there's a few things in this video that Dan says that are factually incorrect, but I just want to focus on a couple of things. He says this. They call it non-ionizing radiation. So he's playing my video where I say that the so-called uh, experts call ultrasound non-ionizing radiation. So I'm, what I'm saying is that's what the experts say. What does Dan say in, in response to this? Which makes it sound safe, but I'm not so sure that it is safe because I've taken the time to read the scientific studies about these things. Well, I'm not sure you're reading the right ones, because by claiming it's non-ionizing radiation, you're saying that it's electromagnetic radiation, which it is not. Okay, so now we've got an issue. So I'm saying that according to the official story, ultrasound is non-ionizing radiation. Dan is now saying that it's not non-ionizing radiation. Let's just listen to what he just said one more time, just so we're clear about what he's saying. I don't, want to, I don't ever want to misrepresent, misrepresent people, okay? I don't think that's a good thing to do. Whether you do it accidentally or intentionally, it's, you shouldn't have to misrepresent people or straw man people. So let's just be clear about what Dan is saying about these things. Well, I'm not sure you're reading the right ones, because by claiming it's non-ionizing radiation, you're saying that it's electromagnetic radiation, which it is not. Okay, so let's go and take a look at what the FDA has to say about this. This is straight from the FDA, guys. So what do I know? I'm just a regular person. This is from the FDA website. Let me zoom out so you can see that. The US Food and Drug Administration. Let's go and take a look at what they have to say about radiation emitting products. Okay, I'm going to zoom in for you all at home. It says, ultrasound imaging has been used for over 20 years and has an excellent safety record. Well, that sounds good. It is based on non-ionizing radiation. That, hold on, that's from, this is from the FDA. What, hold on, what did Dan say? Let's go and, let's go and listen to him one more time. What did, what did, Dan, what, what did you say? Oh, I just want to be clear I haven't misrepresented you here. What are you saying about these things? Well, I'm not sure you're reading the right ones because by claiming it's non-ionizing radiation, you're saying that it's electromagnetic radiation, which it is not. It is based on non-ionizing radiation. Now, this is the FDA is just one source. Maybe the FDA are making it up. But if you look into this, you'll see this is the official story of so-called ultrasound. They call it non-ionizing radiation. This is not my claim. 
And so for, like, that's what they're saying. And so for Dan to turn around and say that it is not, Dan, don't take it up with me, brother. Take it up with the FDA. Because one of you is wrong here. Okay? And supposedly you're both based what you say on science. Now let's look further at what the FDA has to say because I have not claimed that the ultrasounds are killing people. In fact, I make a very different claim to that. I say that ultrasound is a perfect tool for the real agenda behind it because it seems safe because the babies still come out in one piece. The issue is what happens further down the line. And I've got more information to share with you all about that in just a moment. But let's just take a look at this. They say that it does not have the same risks as x-rays or other types of imaging systems that use ionizing radiation. So the official story is that ultrasound is non-ionizing radiation and therefore it is safer than ionizing radiation, which on the surface of it might sound convincing enough. What else does the FDA say? Although ultrasound imaging is generally considered safe when used prudently by appropriately trained healthcare providers, ultrasound energy has the potential to produce biological effects on the body including on a growing body in a womb. Ultrasound waves can heat the tissues slightly. They can heat the tissues slightly, including the tissue of babies. In some cases, let me just do this again. In some cases, it can also produce small pockets of gas in body fluids or tissues, which is known as cavitation. Remember, this is the ultrasound that they do on mother's wombs. And guys, just, I'm only starting on the good stuff here. Just wait until we get to the really good stuff. The long-term consequences of these effects are still unknown, Right, this is from the FDA. The long-term consequences of these effects are still unknown. This is the FDA speaking, not me. Because of the particular concern for effects on the fetus, organizations such as the American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine have, adopt, have advocated prudent use of ultrasound in pregnancy. Okay, so if ultrasound was safe, why would you have to issue any warnings about it? And why are they saying they don't know the long-term effects of cavitation and so forth? Furthermore, the use of ultrasound solely for non-medical purposes, such as obtaining fetal keepsake videos, has been discouraged. Well, why would you discourage it? If it's safe, if ultrasound is completely safe, why would you discourage people from using it willy-nilly? Can someone explain that to me? Keepsake images or videos are reasonable if they are produced during a medically indicated exam and if no additional exposure is required. Okay, now if you, now the reason I made my video which is the one that old mate here is replying to. Let's go back to him, where are you, Simon? So he's replying to my video. I made that video to promote a free podcast on my website, 70 Minute Presentation, where I go through all of the reasons why I personally would be very cautious about using any ultrasounds on babies, okay? I don't think he listened to the podcast before he made his video. I don't think he needed to. All he needed to do was sit there on his camera, right? And attack a so-called conspiracy theorist like myself and make a whole bunch of claims that even go against his own experts, mind you, and he gets 100,000 views and 10K thumbs up and the money that he makes from promoting, he promotes some course or whatever, which by the way, good luck to him, whatever. But the point is, it's his job to get up there and say nasty things about people like me, not to do any real research, not to know the first thing about what he's talking about. You understand? Now, later in his video, he misrepresents what I say. What I say is that the ultrasounds that have been used, say in the 70s and 80s, like when I was a, I was a baby in the late 80s, those uh, tools, those devices, were nothing compared to what's being used today in terms of their abilities to image the fetus and in terms of their power output. Now, this should be obvious if you just look at the difference between the ultrasounds back when I was a baby, these little black and white images they used to have, versus the 3D stuff and the 4D stuff they call it using now. This should be obvious. You shouldn't need anyone to tell you that it's more powerful than it was in the past. But that's not good enough for me. When I was doing my research into this a few years ago, okay, I did all my research into this topic years and years ago, one of the biggest black pills I've ever looked into, I decided to go and look into the official story from people themselves, the experts themselves. Now this Dr. Tony Whittingham, he is an expert in ultrasounds and he promotes ultrasounds. He also promotes prudent use of them. Here's what I found when I was doing my research a few years ago, right? This is from a paper that you can find yourself if you do the research or if you remember johnthebond.com, I provide links to all of this stuff. We'll get to the links and the sources in a moment. Here's, here's what I read. And it was one of the things where my eyebrows like sort of raised to the roof. I was like, hold on a second here. This is an expert in ultrasound. This, this what we're looking at right now is a transcript from a big ultrasound get together where they were celebrating ultrasound. These weren't cynics. These weren't skeptics. These weren't critics. These weren't conspiracy theorists. These were experts. And what, I read through the whole paper. One of the things that came up, and this is towards the end of the paper, was a conversation about safety. 
Here's what Dr. Tony Whittingham had to say at the time. He wrote, there has, let me zoom in for those of you reading along at home, I know sometimes the resolutions are good. He wrote, there has been an incredible increase in power levels and intensity levels from the machines of those early days to those that are around today. A manufacturer from America said to me just in conversation a few weeks ago, some of our machines are hot. Some of our machines are hot. That wasn't the American way of putting it. Our own measurement experiences indicate that whereas average intensities of a fraction of a milliwatt per square centimeter were fairly common in the 1970s, they are now measured in watts per square centimeter. So what he's saying is that the power output in the 70s was a fraction of a milliwatt. Now a milliwatt is a fraction of a watt, it's one one thousandth of a watt. So if you just use some common sense, they're talking about an increase in power we're talking at three or four orders of magnitude, okay? We're talking a thousand times more powerful. Not my words, these are the words of the experts. He goes on to, okay, between the 1970s. Oh, these have been, these ultrasounds have been used since the 70s, they're safe. I, yeah, this is not the same, this is not the same thing. It is a hundred times, a thousand times, maybe, maybe 10,000 times more powerful than what was used in the 70s. And if you look into it further, you'll find it's been an increase, like with every passing decade, the power has gone up and further and further. So even what they were using on me when I was a baby was nothing compared to what parents are using now, okay? Not my story, this is the official story. So this guy says this is partly because the absolute powers have increased in the search for smaller and smaller signals and at higher and higher frequencies, and partly because the beams are getting narrower and narrower, and that's putting up the intensities. So the beams are getting narrower, so what's getting beamed at the fetus is getting more and more powerful. So this Dr. Tony Whittingham goes on to say, I think in the early days, they were quite right to say that ultrasound was safe. Whether that's so certain today is only true if you exercise prudence. Prudence. So one of the points I was making in my podcast, a free podcast, 70 minutes, johnthebond.com, link in the info box below. One of the points I was making in this was that people now were apparently getting these keepsake ultrasounds, 4D ultrasounds, super powerful. They're getting two, three, four, five ultrasounds. And the point I was making is that even according to the official story, this is not safe. That's the main point I was making. I also used another study from 1993, looking at the comparison between different cohorts, one ultrasound on a baby versus multiple. And the reason why that was so significant for me was because like holding back in the nineties, these ultrasound devices were a fraction as powerful as they are today. And so if they were to find a difference between one ultrasound versus multiple on the growth of the baby, what can we infer from that now that we know that according to the official story, the ultrasound devices are significantly more, not a little bit more powerful, significantly. These are the kinds of points I was making in my podcast. Now, of course, a free podcast available in the info box below. Check it out. So this guy gets up there. He misrepresents what I say. He's like, oh, JLB says the frequencies are going up. That's not what I said. That's not my claim. I'm, what I'm saying is the power has gone up. And that's not my claim. That's the official story. Because I've taken the time to do the research. And so my friends, I wanna leave you with these links in the info box below. Go and check them out if you are willing to go down a very deep and dark rabbit hole. Because if you arrive at the obvious conclusion once you've found the evidence, it might leave you pondering what exactly is going on in this world. Now, the good news is for people like Simon Dan and his moronic followers, they're a bunch of midwits who wouldn't even know how to look up a scientific paper, let alone read it, okay? They, they, they're very stupid people, most of them. The very few who will look up a scientific paper are going to go into it and do everything they can to try and ignore anything that goes against their preconceived notions. They're very, very simple. Most people are very simple people, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. And so these people are going to continue to radiate their babies. In. Radiate, non-ionized radiate. Let's go back to that. Non-ionizing radiation, not my words, guys. We like radiation. They're going to continue to radiate their babies. Oh, it's safe. It's not ionizing. It's no problem. With devices that are 100, 1,000, 10,000 times more powerful than what they were radiated with when they were babies. And that's what's going to happen. Nothing that I say or do is going to change that. Nothing that Simon Dan says or does is going to change that. And so this video is really just for the very small few of you who actually give a flying you-know-what about anything and are going to take the time to do your own research. That's all I've ever encouraged anybody to do. And then at the end of his video, Simon Dan goes on to claim that I'm somehow putting people in harm by discussing these things. Now, Simon Dan, I have no personal beef with you. I wish you the best. You're just, uh, you're just what you are. You are just what you are. So I, I've got no personal beef with you. 
But if you see this video, I challenge you to go and look at this evidence and come back and tell me that somehow I'm wrong. Because right now you're in contradiction with the FDA. So it's you versus the FDA, Simon Dan. And to anybody who sees this video, who is a fan of Simon Dan, you've now got a decision to make. Are you gonna trust this peanut to tell you what's right and wrong? Or are you gonna go and do your own research? It's up to you. And you know what? I don't really care. So John Bon on 9 September 2021, links in the info box below. If you're on the free JLB mailing list, go and check your inbox, your spam folder, your promotions folder. There's two hours of member podcast waiting for you right now. You're gonna love it. And there'll also be links to my free 70 minute podcast, which anyone can access about the ultrasound hoax. It's available in the link in the info box below. And as for my other research, the links, guys, just go and follow the resources that are there, the, the 1993 studies there, go and check it out. And uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, that's it for me for today. Thank you very much. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And Simon Dan, thank you for the free advertisement. No more monkey business. No more monkey business. How dare you?